We want to welcome everyone to the 3rd District Congressional Debate. I'm James Jarman with KRDO News Channel 13, and we want to quickly thank all of our sponsors who've made tonight's forum possible for you. KRDO News Channel 13, I'm glad to say, is a proud sponsor, along with the Pueblo Chieftain, the Center for New Media at Pueblo Community College, the San de Cristo Arts and Conference Center, and the Governance Task Force of the 2020 Commission. I want to briefly run through the rules. We've already talked to the candidates about this. We're going to have three-minute opening statements. We're also going to have the questions from our panelists. They're going to be two-minute answers each, and then each candidate will have a one-minute rebuttal. And I want to ask the audience as well out here uh, if we can keep everything down, no responses, please, no boos, no cheers. Uh, we'll hold all that until the end. We want to respect our candidates and give them as much time uh, as they can to uh, answer these questions. We have a lot of questions to get to from our panelists, and I can quickly get through our panelists right now. Uh, proud to say we have managing editor from the Pueblo Chieftain, Steve Henson. He'll be asking some of the questions tonight, along with KRDO News Channel 13's Leela Holland. And from the Pueblo Chieftain, we also have reporter Peter Roper. They have all put a lot of thought into these questions that they're going to be asking the candidates all for your benefit uh, in Southern Colorado so you can find out where the candidates will stand. We did have a coin toss earlier, and uh, incumbent Congressman Scott Tipton won the toss. He has deferred, which means he will get the last, he will have the closing statement, uh, the last closing statement. So we will start with uh, challenger Sal Pace with his three-minute opening statement right now. Uh, thank you, James. Uh, thank you, Pueblo Chieftain and KRDO. Uh, I want to uh, start off by uh, introducing and thanking the most important person uh, in my family and uh, in my life, uh, my wife Marlene and our three kids, Wyatt, Carlo, and Delana. They're over there. Um, it's only because of their love and support I'm able to run for this seat. And Alana's only to cry when uh, Congressman Tipton is talking. <laughs> Um, and also sitting next to Wyatt is my dad, uh, Salvatore. Uh, I'm the son of a mechanic. I'm the youngest of nine kids. Uh, I've uh, lived in Pueblo with Marlene in our small house uh, with our three kids. And we know what people are going through uh, with bills and utilities at the end of each month. We have a hard time setting, setting aside money for savings. Yet it seems like in Washington, uh, people are more concerned with uh, with fighting and uh, causing problems instead of finding solutions. And we have a lot of problems uh, that need solutions. Uh, we all know people who have faced bankruptcy or foreclosure or faced tough times in these uh, past few years. In my own family, my Aunt Camille, she had a, a stroke a couple years ago because of her medical bills. She lost everything she ever worked for. She lost her home. She lost her bank account. And in March, my Aunt Camille lost her life. This is not the promise that this country is founded on. A uh, promise that if you work hard, you play by the rules, you can retire in dignity, you can put your kids through college, but instead of addressing the problems in America, we're just getting more fighting out of Washington. Uh, Congressman Tipton is a, is a nice man. We served together in the legislature, but with virtually 100% voting record with his leadership, uh, we're seeing more problems caused than solutions found. Uh, we can see this in the type of campaigns we're both running as well. Uh, uh, you can have someone who's going to focus on solutions or someone who's going to focus 100% negative. Uh, just so happens if you focus 100% negative in Colorado, when you get back to Washington, uh, you might be 100% negative as well. We in Pueblo have seen what gridlock means. Today, Vestas announced more layoffs. We've seen a farm bill that has not been passed or signed into law. In fact, uh, uh, the congressman took both sides of bringing the farm bill back up to a vote. My record in the legislature and, and serving Pueblo has been one of working in a bipartisan fashion to solve problems. I passed the bill to create the, the Fountain Creek District to address water quality. I passed a bill to protect Pinion Canyon uh, the first protections, uh, the strongest protections put in place. And I can't but help feel, with all the fighting in Washington, that it's time for people like you and me to have a voice again in Washington. All right. Thank you, Mr. Pace. <laughs> if we can hold our applause, please. We hold our applause. That'd be great. Thanks so much. Congressman. 
Well, thank you, and I'd like to be able to thank the Chieftain KRDO as well uh, for hosting tonight's debate. And I'd like to be able to introduce uh, the love of my life and my bride for the last 29 years, my wife, Jean, and very blessed tonight also to be joined by my one surviving aunt, uh, my Aunt Rita, uh, that drove over to be able to be with us here this evening. Thank you so much for being here. Folks, this election is truly about you. And that is where we need to be able to keep the focus. We do need in Washington to make sure that we send someone who can actually deliver for the 3rd Congressional District, for the state of Colorado, and for this nation. I'm pleased to be able to report to you that in our office, we've been able to pass five bills through the United States House of Representatives, garnering Republican and Democrat support on each of my bills. My hydroelectric bill just cleared its first hit hurdle in a Democrat-controlled Senate, garnering again bipartisan support. We've been able to stand up for this district, to be able to pass legislation, to be able to maintain our quality of life, and to be able to create those opportunities to get people back to work. You know, as I've traveled through the 3rd Congressional District, I've driven this road Highway 160, I-25 to Pueblo, most of my life. Driven past businesses that, until just a few years ago, held the promise for the future. We now see dust on the windows for rent and for lease signs that are out. We've got to be able to get America back to work. I'm talking to young mothers, young mothers who are having to measure how many gallons of gasoline to be able to put into their vehicle and still be able to put food on the table for the family. I'm talking to people that are fearful now of the future. We have those opportunities. I've supported legislation to be able to remove those regulations which are inhibiting our ability to be able to create jobs in this country, to be able to provide for America's energy security in this nation, and to be able to literally put people back to work. But the votes that we make do have actual consequences, actual impacts. Sal and I served together in the state legislature. We even co-sponsored bills together in the state legislature. But we went down some different tracks as well. If you have a license plate fee that you noticed that went up over the last few years, my opponent voted to increase your taxes, hurting rural Colorado the most, hurting our farm and ranch community the most. If you're a senior citizen, he cast the deciding vote to take away that homestead exemption. He's raised taxes with the dirty dozen on small businesses. Those are not the solutions we need to have. Thank you, Congressman. Let's move on to our panel now. We'll begin with uh, Mr. Henson with the Pueblo Chieftain. Your first question. Okay. Gentlemen, you'll each answer this. Has your opponent conducted a fair and accurate advertising campaign? Let's begin with Mr. Pace. Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, I woke up uh, this morning and uh, turned on the TV. Actually, uh, my wife called me yesterday. Uh, this is the first I learned about it. And she put Wyatt on the phone, my five-year-old. And he said, Dad, are you as bad as I saw on TV? And I had to explain to my five-year-old how I wasn't a bad person because of the ads that Congressman Tipton has run. We are in a country that is so divided and with serious problems, and Congressman Tipton hasn't run a single ad about what he believes in. Everything is an attack on me. Uh, if that's all you can stand for, um, I think at the end of the day, when you're in Congress, you're going to be standing alone. Uh, as far as uh, the attack on... Uh, on uh, senior homestead exemption, uh, Congressman Tipton actually voted the same way on senior homestead exemption. Uh, there's a Grand Junction Sentinel fact check from back in May that explains how Congressman Tipton uh, voted the exact same way. Um, I encourage all of you guys to go and read it. Uh, he also attacked me for cutting Medicare. The, the fact of the matter is I've never voted on Medicare, and 
the 718 or 16 number that we keep hearing is a, a bold-faced lie. Uh, Congressman Tipton has the gall to go to Washington and vote twice uh, on that exact same provision in the Ryan budget and then has run three ads attacking me for exactly what he has done. His, his words just don't ring true. What we need is folks who are going to focus on finding solutions. And trust me, we all know there are a lot of problems in our society that need solutions, not more of the vitriolic rhetoric we've been getting. Please hold your applause if you can. Thank you. Mr. Tipton. Well, thank you. Sometimes, Sal, the truth hurts. You did vote to take away that homestead exemption. Uh, and I am really dismayed that I have to be able to explain to you, since you were in the state legislature, the process. Very big difference between the second and the final reading vote. We have done the fact check. You voted to take away and hurt our senior citizens. I voted to stand up and to be able to protect them. To your point on the ads, Sal's run very friendly ads, in fact, nice ads. But he's had his counterparts that have been running the attack ads. They've attacked my support, my support for creating American energy security. You know, I hope, folks, I hope you join with me. When you go and fill up that gas tank, when you visit with that young lady that I visited with that was measuring how many gallons of gasoline to be able to put in her tank and still to be able to buy groceries, it is about time that the United States of America took control of its own energy future, and I will stand behind that. We face a challenge. Mr. Pace wants a representative who can get along in Washington. I've passed five bills through the United States House of Representatives. I have a sixth, actually, that just cleared the natural resources, all garnering support of Republicans and Democrats. Those are solutions-oriented bills to be able to get our people back to work, to pay down the national debt in this country, and to stand up for the hardworking people right here in Pueblo. All right, you had a little bit more time, but... I think the applause may have taken some of that. If we can keep the applause down, that'd be great. Again, your response. Uh, Congressman Tipton, I, I, uh, I think it's great that you have passed five bills through the House. Uh, what, we need people, what we need is people who can pass bills through the House, through the Senate, and sign into law. Uh, you can, we can all go online and watch Schoolhouse Rocks to see how a bill becomes a law. Um, and Congressman, you've been so focused on divisive politics that we have not been getting solutions out of Washington. Earlier you attacked me on faster. And let me remind all of you, it was just four years ago that we had two firefighters in Crowley County drive over a bridge that had burned out and died when they crashed into the, the culvert. We had 126 structurally deficient bridges. Being an elected official, isn't always about what's doing what's popular, it's what's doing what's right too. And I'm proud to have fought for what's right in my time in the legislature. I wish we had a little more of that out of Congress too. Mr. Tipton. Well, Sal, I thank you for complimenting me on passing with Republican and Democrat support my five bills through the House of Representatives. But you might wanna watch a little bit more of that schoolhouse rock because we do not 